is your first time watching one of our videos, I would suggest uh, liking and subscribing. We do greatly appreciate that if this is helpful content or you're learning from this. Um, you know, the simple act of liking this video is obviously awesome for us. That really lets us know that we're doing the right thing. And on top of that, if you do really like the content and want to see more, I would definitely suggest subscribing because uh, we do release content every single week. Uh, a lot of it is based on Jags, but we also do some other interesting vehicles, as you can see right behind me. Um, so again, you know, every subscriber uh, really helps us as well. And, um, you know, it really just uh, lets us know that we're doing the right thing and making the right content. So, um, you know, if there was something that was helpful in this video, feel free to also leave us a comment and uh, check us out on other platforms like um, Instagram, Patreon, and now we're even on TikTok. So, check us out. All right, guys. So, we are getting a start on the XJS today. Um, we've kind of looked over some of the, uh, the different bits and pieces that the car needs and have a little bit of an idea of a game plan of how we're going to do it. But, like we mentioned in our previous video, uh, if you saw that, one of the first steps that we need to do is put new tires on it. So we, uh, we sourced some tires for it, and we're going to be running to our local, uh, local tire shop to get those put on. Um, nothing fancy about that. I mean, in the end, I'm sure some people do that themselves. You know, we like the shop that we've been working with for a while, so uh, we're just going to take it around to them and let them do it for us while we have a cup of coffee. Can't complain about that, right? So, anyway, um, we're gonna get that started for the uh, the first part of the video, and then run you through, you know, a couple of the things that we're gonna be working on. Um, just kind of small little uh, detail stuff that's gonna just make that car a little bit nicer and a little bit nicer each time. So, one thing that James was able to fix uh, that's just a, a nice little, you know, easy, um, not even really a repair. Um, the door locks weren't originally working on the car, so you put the key in, turn it, and it just wouldn't do anything uh, with the central locking. And um, I guess all it took was just uh, kind of manually actuating the locks. Um, so, you know, he jumped in the car and kind of just worked them up and down a little bit, and that kind of freed them up. So really, they were just sort of sticky. Um, so that's been kind of a nice, uh, easy, easy fix, which uh, adds some functionality back into the car. And yet again, proves the point that these things just like to be driven and used, and that keeps everything in good working order most of the time. So uh, next up uh, on the locks, we do need to find a battery for the uh, the key fob uh, so that we can get the uh, the remote working. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be uh, taking off and uh, going to the, uh, the tire place now. We're rolling. All right, so we've got it back from the tire shop. She's got new shoes, and the difference it made in ride quality, as you'd expect, was fantastic. The, uh, the old tires were definitely uh, not perfectly balanced, for sure, and they were also pretty uh, harsh. They were kind of, you know, stiff. Uh, so having new, softer rubber tires on it uh, has made the ride smooth as anything. Honestly, actually, probably a little smoother even than my XJR. Um, it's responsive, it's comfy, it's quiet, so that was a real huge win for not much money. Um, let me show you what we got on this. So we ended up going with the uh, Yokohama um, Avid Touring S tires. Uh, they were pretty cost effective. I believe we paid um, $78 per piece with these. And um, we usually buy them from Discount Tire Direct because you can get those road hazard certificates, which have saved my butt so many times. So I swear by those. Um, the size would be 225 60 16 for this wheel. And um, once again, it's actually just a very nice, comfortable ride. Uh, and a relatively inexpensive tire for a good name brand. So we are very pleased with the purchase and we think that was a, a good choice. So if you've been considering what tire to get for your XJS, we can vouch for these. So the car had a check engine light on uh, when we first got it started. Uh, after the initial little you know, drive around the block, it popped a, a check engine light on, uh, as well as the ABS light. Um, we pulled the codes and um, honestly, it actually didn't have any saved codes in it. So even though the light was on, we weren't able to uh, pull any data. Um, so for the time being, we cleared the code to see if the light comes back on. Uh, so far it has not. So it may have been something to do with perhaps the low voltage from the initial start where it was kind of hesitant to start. I know some Jags can be sensitive to that. Um, so we're just gonna keep a close eye on it and see if that light comes back on. And if it does, we'll do some deeper digging and see what that was actually associated with. Um, but yeah, figured we mentioned that. Uh, we're also going to be looking into the ABS light as well, but it looks like that's going to be a relatively straightforward fix. So as we mentioned in the previous video, uh, the top does not go up and down. Um, so that is uh, one of our projects that we'd like to kind of work on as well. And um, we're actually probably going to um, use some of the time we have today to start digging in and see if we can't find where the, uh, the rams that actually move the mechanism are located. 
uh, and see if we can track down where the fluid leak is coming from. Um, you know, it seems like some people have issues with the, uh, the actual pump itself, but it doesn't look like that's uh, what we're running into. It looks like it's actually a leak at one of the actuators themselves. So um, we're going to do a little bit of digging and see if we can find from the inside perhaps where to reach those. So for those of you that know a little bit about this car, it is a 2 plus 2, which means it is basically a two-seater with two fake seats in the back. Um, <laughs> the uh, Some cars are better than others. Um, this one is definitely one of the worst back seats I think I've ever experienced. Let me, let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. So let's see if I can do this. Oh, okay. So I am pretty much dead on six feet tall. Obviously the roof is up right now. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think this, uh, this really shows how much I'm having to hunch. I mean, here, so if I try and make to where my shoulders are where they're supposed to be, my head's touching the roof. So uh, don't expect to be able to put uh, people back here. And then on top of that, the seat position that you need to use for the driver's seat is a little bit ridiculous. And I am crammed in here. So for an emergency, sure, you could technically wedge someone back here, but for actual use, this is not very good. <laughs> So James is currently um, unscrewing the uh, two, I believe they're Phillips head screws, um, and the, the hope is that once we take these out we'll be able to remove the seat base. And um, our thought is that we're going to be able to remove maybe these panels or something around this area uh, to be able to see the mechanism for the, uh, the top. So uh, we're going to just kind of dig in and see what we can find. Um, we weren't able to find much information online, so we're just going to kind of go on an adventure and. Hopefully, uh, we will learn how this all works and be able to share with you guys. Yeah, that was pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So it was just the two Phillips head screws, and then there's these little kind of washer pieces right here that they go through. And it just lifts right out. There's this kind of foam liner here as well. It looks like it's kind of the floor liner. So we may have to just kind of tip that forward because it looks like it continues all the way under the uh, the carpet here. You so. see the fluid leak. You see this? Look, this is that fluid leak. Oh, there you go. So it actually leaks into there. Yeah. So we need to get back in this area. Yep. All right. Well, this has been a good discovery session already. That leaf just scared the heck out of me. Just fell out of the tree behind my ear. <laughs> All right, so much like the seat base, on the back you just have the same thing, two Phillips head screws, one on each side, and you undo those, and then it looks like you just kind of lift up and it unhooks the top, and then the back comes out. Probably one of the easier seat removals that we've uh, we've done. One thing you should always check when you've bought a new vehicle is for spare change. There's got to be at least a couple bucks in there, so we'll dig that out. And there you go. See, that's all. Uh, all goes towards the fund for fixing this thing up. All right, so a quick update. Um, we have, as you saw, removed the seat base and the seat back. Um, there's also a piece of sound deadening behind the seat that we've kind of lifted out that was pretty easy. Um, so now we're working on removing the uh, side panels that we pointed out in the last clip. And um, I guess it looks like they're relatively free um, other than uh, this is kind of hooked on the sill plate here, but looks like we might be able to get it up and over it. Uh, and it seems like this uh, basically is one of like those little plastic clip things, and that's kind of what's holding pretty much the whole panel in. So uh, we're just seeing what tools we have on us right now to where we can kind of ch carefully pop this out without damaging the leather. Um, so I think once we get that out, we might be able to actually remove this panel. Um, to fully, fully remove it, we'd probably have to do something with the seat belt. Uh, maybe like remove this 
track down the bottom here or something like that, but we may be able to get away with just um, uh, pulling this forward and leaving the seatbelt looped through it. So we're gonna see what we're working with there. All right, we have success. Um, so relatively straightforward to remove once you know what you're doing. A um, little bit fiddly, but definitely not the worst we've dealt with. So basically, you're going to want to um, put the rear quarter window down, um, which is just a function of putting the roof down, um, kind of like a partial step towards uh, putting the top down. Um, so you have to like put the handbrake on, and then you push the, uh, the top down button, and the windows will retract. Once you've done that, um, normally the leather shoulder would sit over here, and there's the little plastic clip. Just carefully pry that out, try not to damage the leather. And then um, once that is removed, basically down at the front here, this is the foot of the piece, which is kind of actually tucked under the sill plate just a tiny bit. So we just carefully hopped it over the sill plate here so that it was able to move forward. And then literally just kind of teased the whole thing towards us and it undid these two clips right here. And that was all that was holding it in. Now, once you've unclipped that, you wanna be very careful not to like try and pull it all the way out because you do have the speaker and the little, um, what I'll say, like a reading lamp or a dome light, which you can see lit up over there. Um, so it's basically just uh, this purple plug here for the light, which you can see right here, and the black plug for the speaker. So, um, you know, just make sure you un uh, unclip those before you move it too far. And then we've just actually looped the seat belt up through the um, the handle for the, the top here just to keep it out of the way while we're working on it. And actually, I'm going to change angles here so you get a better view of the, uh, the leak. So, this is the culprit, we believe. This is the uh, hydraulic ram that actuates the top. And as you can see, we have fluid kind of along the whole length of it, honestly. Um, there is a fitting down here, and uh, we're wondering if perhaps it's the fitting that's leaking. Um, so we're gonna kind of uh, actually try the method, uh, you know, putting the top down to see if we can get it to leak while now that we can see it. And uh, we will determine where the leak is coming from, whether it's the top or the bottom, and we'll go from there. And you can see on the plastic here, where it sprayed inside of this panel, and um, we noticed actually that one of the clips on this side was a different color, so we believe that someone may have already been in here to try, or at least to see what was going on, and that may have been a determining factor in this car being like, oh man, you know, like I don't want to fix that, so, you know, uh, who cares, we'll fix it. But that being said, uh, we're going to dive in and see if we can't uh, identify where the leak is coming from. So even though we're pretty sure the leak is on the other side, we're actually going to show you the um, the removal on this. Um, so we have removed the clip that is up at the top here. Um, as you see, we've hopped this up and over the sill plate, like I said, um, basically pushing back on this piece, lifting up underneath here with a flat blade. And then if you need to, you could also get a second tool in the front here just to encourage it up that little bit more. And then literally you just kind of wiggle and shimmy it and it'll pop the two plugs like that. And uh, as we mentioned before, we looped the seat belt up and out of the way. And now we need to unplug the speaker and the light. He has that. You gotta press pretty hard. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Got there it. it goes. Nicely done. It's really in there. <laughs> And there we have it. Easy as that. So, we figured it out so you don't have to. <laughs> All right, so we did confirm it is the uh, hydraulic ram or actuator on the uh, driver's side. And uh, I'll show you what we saw. Uh, we decided not to film while we were actually doing the test, um, but basically what we did was um, we just actually pressed and held the button as though we were gonna put the top down. And um, that way it would build pressure in the system so we could see where it leaked from. So I was originally thinking it was going to be leaking from this fitting down here, but James mentioned that it perhaps could be the top seal, and he was correct. So it basically, um, let's see if I can get it to, there you go. So you see where the silver uh, ram actually comes out of the body there. Um, there's a seal between those, and it just squirted fluid out of that. So uh, the ram itself has failed, or at least that seal has, and um, 
we are going to look and see if we can't just replace these uh, with new ones or at least rebuilt ones. So, honestly, not the scariest thing. Uh, we were kind of thinking it was going to be a little worse than this. Um, and I actually feel pretty good. I think we're going to be able to do this no problem. All right, so wrapping up for today, um, we determined where the leak was coming from on the uh, the top, which is good. Uh, we actually managed to track down a set of new um, cylinders for the uh, the roof, and uh, they're from a company that uh, you know seems to know what they're doing, and um, uh, has like a seven year warranty stuff like that. So we're pretty optimistic, and we ordered them. Um, so we will let you know when those parts come in, and uh, you know we'll do a video of the process of swapping out the uh, the rams. Uh, as its own kind of concise thing as well, but uh, I would say all in all, pretty uh, pretty good day. We uh, got kind of a bunch of little stuff done, and um, you know we're already making swift progress on this thing. So uh, we appreciate you uh, you know joining in like you usually do, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.